What's up, guys? Honestly, in this video, I just wanted to go on a rant against McDojos because I feel like they're extremely damaging to martial arts in general. So I'm just going to get right into it. First of all, how can you spot a McDojo? So here are some key signs. Number one, they never pressure test any techniques or strategies that they speak about in the instruction part of class. That would be doing a lot of katas, doing a lot of lining up and practicing stuff on unresisting opponents, and then never trying those moves in a live setting, okay? Um, a lot of times they'll use BS excuses like, you know, all oh, our techniques are so deadly they might, you know, kill someone if we implement them live. And it's like, okay, you know, there's definitely some other things you could be showing that aren't immediately lethal, you know? Like, obviously, if I'm training with a firearm, I'm not going to shoot, I'm not going to shoot someone in demonstration of, you know, the efficacy of having a firearm, because that would be extremely stupid. But let's be honest, at almost every grappling technique that we do, outside of small joint manipulation or certain kinds of neck cranks, can be done safely and with control because you have the ability to tap once that pressure gets sufficiently tight enough, okay? So, you know, all this stuff about eye gouging and, you know, small digit manipulation and, you know, fish hooking saying and biting or whatever, saying like, oh, that stuff is that stuff is illegal. So, you know, we wouldn't be able to implement our martial art. And it's like, OK, you need positional dominance to do those things effectively, though. Right. And in a martial art like judo or wrestling or sambo or jujitsu that teaches you how to establish positional dominance. Guess what, guys? We can do those things better than you guys can, right? We can bite too, we can fish hook too, we can eye gouge too. So that seems like a completely silly, ridiculous argument to me. Um, so they don't pressure test. They're also probably belt factories. That means they promote early and they promote often. And they often accompany that with massive testing fees, okay? And sometimes if you fail the test, you have to take it again and then pay the next testing fee, okay? So it's a very transparent, means of making money to me, okay? You're not trying to preserve meritocracy by doing that. You're not trying to preserve the integrity of your martial art. You're trying to make money off of it, okay? And I don't necessarily have a problem with testing fees, you, you, you know, um, in, in general, but if you're charging $500 for every belt, you know, and you're doing that every six months, that seems a bit ridiculous to me, you know? A reasonable testing fee to me would be like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, right? Maybe once, maybe once or twice a year, you know, uh, because you're paying for the instructor's time and you're paying for the belt. That's about it. And the belt costs like seven bucks anyway, you know, so you don't need to charge, you, know, you don't really need to charge anything. Another thing you can use to spot a McDojo is a place where cross training and competition are highly discouraged, okay? Why might those things be discouraged in McDojo? Well, um, if you cross train and you go to another school, you may realize that the techniques you're learning in your current McDojo school are BS and don't work, right? So they don't want you to be exposed to a wider array of martial arts. So anyone that's like, no, only do our martial art, don't do boxing, don't do jujitsu, don't do wrestling, don't do Muay Thai, right? They're trying, they're, they're, they're trying to stop you from being exposed to things that actually work. I don't know how that's still possible when, you know, the UFC has been around for 30 years and, you know, we have tons of video online showing what really does work, but, you know, people will, people will try to do whatever they, whatever they can, I guess. And, you know, since these schools exist, I'm sure there's some explanation they use for why those things are BS, you know, probably very similar to the eye gouging, you know, groin strikes and, you know, Finger, dig finger manipulations and stuff that I talked about earlier. So these are all signs that a school is a McDojo. So why are they a problem? Well, they injure the image of martial arts in general and especially specifically the martial art that they claim to be a part of. Meritocracy, pressure testing, these are both very important things that need to be maintained in a martial art to make sure it stays legitimate, to make sure it stays grounded in reality, to make sure its practitioners actually can fight and actually can defend themselves. Once one of those things starts being stripped away, it becomes a problem, right? And obviously if you strip pressure testing away, you're stripping away meritocracy too because pressure testing is where you can implement your techniques against someone and show that they work on someone who's resisting back at you. I get upset when I see purple belts that clearly are not purple belts, that they should be like fresh blue belts. You know, why did they get promoted too early? Well, some schools, even in jujitsu, they have attendance-based promotions, you know? Um, you know, and there's plenty of other figures that have 
talked about this and you know un unfortunately even at the adult rank level it's still common you know for for kids i understand somewhat for you know uh belt ranks they have half ranks and they have stripes to keep kids motivated um but even even then you know i would never promote a kid to a full rank that i believe didn't earn that rank you know no matter how long it took because you have to set you have to set these lessons early on that hey listen you have to actually get better. You have to actually improve. You have to continuously put time in. And it may take you longer than somebody else, but it's going to mean something when you get it, right? And if you promote even one person that didn't deserve it, that didn't deserve their next rank, it undermines the value of the rank for everybody else, right? So one act against meritocracy is an act against everybody that is partaking in that system. So, you know, I believe there's more than one path to a black belt. You know, someone who's injured to the point where they absolutely cannot live roll to, you know, the, the ability that, you know, someone that's not injured could. Even those people have a path to a black belt, but it has to be based in something. For me, that would be teaching ability, okay? If you can teach jujitsu at a black belt level of competency, but you are unable to physically perform the moves for whatever reason, you know, Maybe you have a leg that just completely doesn't work or, or you know, your, your lower body is paralyzed or something. You know, I believe there should still be a path to a black belt for you, you know, but it should be a very high standard and you should be able to demonstrate the ability to produce black belts yourself with your teaching ability. So even that, to prove that, that's going to take a decade or more, right? So it's still based in it's still based in meritocracy. You're still having to prove yourself and that's the idea, right? Because that is the foundation of what we do. If meritocracy goes out the window and we just give belts out because, oh, this person comes to class a lot and they try hard, you know, but they kind of suck or, you know, like, oh, this, you know, I like this person, you know, and, and I want them to get to the next rank. It'll make them feel good. You know, it undermines it for everybody else. And the thing is, once you start doing that enough, once enough McDojos become a part of the martial art, then that becomes the brand of the entire martial art. I'll use Aikido as an example, you know, and I'm going to pick on them a little bit, but um, Aikido has very legitimate techniques, right? And I've met some Aikido practitioners that have taught me several great things, right? And I think they're extremely skilled and they know, and they know a lot and uh, they have a complete system of self-defense themselves. But I would say that's only about 10%, you know, of the, of the schools and the Aikido activity that I've seen. A lot of these people are just not capable of dealing with a complete system of grappling on the ground, you know? Um, so, and, and, and there's so many of those schools that don't pressure, that don't pressure test at all. So for that, for that reason, you know, Aikido is just kind of known as like a martial art that, you know, doesn't have a lot of practical value because it's its own system that needs another system of grappling to actually be implemented and be successful. And again, there are some Aikido practitioners that, you know, practice a form of Aikido that does do pressure testing that is legitimate. I'm not talking about those people, okay? I'm talking about the 90% that don't do that. But those 90% are the brand of Aikido. When people think of Aikido, that's what they think about. They think of people lining up in a straight line and doing a bunch of fancy moves with no resistance that practically would be very difficult to pull off against, you know, a grappler that knows what they're doing. Lastly, meritocracy, I believe, needs to be enforced at the cultural level of martial arts everywhere, not just from the top down from an organization like the IBJJF, okay? Because, you know, you know if you've been grappling a while, you know what the difference is between a blue belt and a purple belt in terms of how grappling them feels, right? You definitely know the difference between a blue belt and a black belt, you know, when you, when you grapple between them. And, um, you know, you can, talk amongst your, you can talk amongst yourselves and be like, hey, like, you know, this guy's a purple belt and I'm a white belt, but I'm crushing them. And normally other purple belts absolutely crush me. So what's going on? Well, that person was probably promoted too soon and they don't deserve their rank, you know? Um, and of course, every school owner has their own definition of what constitutes a blue, purple, brown, black belt. But ultimately, you need to maintain the meritocracy of the martial, of the martial art. So you know, you can't, you can't have these ridiculous definitions that are only time-based and not based on skill and the ability to apply what you know. So basically, meritocracy is the strength behind all of the real martial arts, and everyone has a responsibility to maintain it 
however they can. If you own a school like I do, right, maintain a meritocratic environment at your school. Don't promote someone because you feel bad for them or because you know they've been training for a, for a while, right? Make sure make sure it's actually skill based and it's based on a certain criteria that you've developed. Um, if you're an organizer at the higher levels of the sport, you know obviously you can do a lot more. But even it, even if somebody is just a blue belt or a purple belt, right? You know you can hold people accountable by, you know, smashing them. Okay, if you're if you're an average blue belt and you're smashing, you know, you're smashing a brown belt around your age and your age and your size. You know, that should tell them like, hey, maybe I'm not at a, at a school where I should be. You know, maybe I'm getting promoted too soon, you know, um, especially if that blue belt normally gets smashed by brown belts. You know, these are the things that matter. So um, let's all do what we can. Let's preserve the meritocracy and, uh, you know, the strength of our martial art. Let's call out the McDojos. Uh, by the way, guys, when it comes to calling out McDojos, nobody does it better than McDojo Life. So make sure you follow them. Um, Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you have something you disagree with or there's something you want to expand upon, please leave a comment. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you guys can see the new videos once we release them. I release them about three times a week, so you'll be the first to know if you hit the notification bell. So thanks a lot, guys. Hope you guys have a great day.